Hey folks, today's program is being brought to you by Your Pleasures Erotic Health and Wellness Boutique. Your Pleasures has a wide variety of adult educational materials, top-notch adult novelties and clothing, real-world dating and relationship advice, and more. You are dash pleasures that's your pleasures not only focuses on erotic pleasure and satisfaction we aim to educate people about the health and wellness benefits of intimacy we are here to prove that sexuality is not naughty it's necessary so stop by your pleasures that's you are dash pleasures dot com and see for yourself that's your pleasures dot com Hey folks, welcome back to the Darren Harris Podcast. I am your host, Darren Harris. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Hope everybody had a good week, good productive week. My week was really good. It was Mother's Day. Celebrated Mother's Day with my wife and my mother. We drove up to see my mom. It was really cool. We had uh, we had lunch. My mom forced me to eat a cheeseburger. It was great. Uh, we had to drive. We drove about uh, three hours uh, north of where we are to go visit my mother and we had a lot of time in the car so like I said last week uh, this week's topic is relationships why you suck at them why you suck at relationships and why your relationships suck you suck at it you fucking suck that's the bad news good news is we all suck at it everybody here everybody listening everybody who says there's some sort of relationship they everybody sucks at fucking relationships everybody sucks at them why why do we suck at relating to each other that shit is baffling to me today we're gonna we're gonna address a few things we're gonna address like relationship issues and concerns we're going to address how we deal with problems that might arise in your relationship. If you're having some issues with your, your loved one, uh, stay tuned. We're going to, I'm going to address, you know, how I would get by some of these things, which, you know, have, have helped me. So, And, um, you know, how to put the juice back in relationship once your relationship has lost its juiciness. So we're going to try and do that. And how do you grow love? You know, how do you do that? How, you, how do you grow love? You know, a lot of people don't know how to be in love. You know, you know, a lot of people, they think they're in love. They're in love with ideas of being in love, but they really don't know how to be in love or how to grow love. And also, we're going to know our value. We're going to learn about how to value yourself, you know, or my, well, we're going to learn about what I learned about how to value myself and also how to value my relationship and also how to value my partner in my relationship. So those are all the things that we're going to be talking about today on the podcast. So again, man, thank you very much for sticking with me. Today is episode eight, y'all. Yes, yes, yes. Episode eight. I'm going to keep it going. <clears throat> Excuse me. I got um, some really good feedback from some people. So I'm going to keep it popping, man. I, I really am. I really am. Um, so I want to give a couple of shout outs or actually just one shout out. I want to give a shout out. Like I said, it was Mother's Day. I want to give a shout out to mothers everywhere all over the planet. Shout out to if you had a baby anywhere in your life. Shout out to you, girl. Shout out to you. You know what I'm saying? You know, I hope some, you know, somebody that's that's pregnant and, you know, or, or thinking about getting pregnant or, you know, planning their pregnancy. You know, it's Mother's Day is a great thing. man. I love my mother, man. I always love my mama. That's the greatest thing that I've ever been given in my life was my mother. So but I do have uh, I have a great stepmother as well. So I'm very thankful for her as well. And I, I feel kind of like a bad stepson because I did kind of neglect to call her. So after this podcast, I'm going to give her a call and tell her I love her. So. A uh, big shout out to mamas everywhere and all the babies, mamas, mamas. So that's what I'm doing today is giving shout outs to mothers everywhere. Today's Dope Shit Award goes to, uh, wow, today's Dope Shit Award. Now check this out. I really enjoy this because anytime my father, my father is a, was a uh, teacher for a long time, long like his whole career, he was a teacher. In my whole existence, uh, anything that I've ever known about my father, my father is always a, a teacher. He's never held any other kind of job. He didn't jump around. He was a teacher at one place. And uh, so this, to me, is a very good, it's a, it's a good story because it kind of hits home a little bit because uh, he, he was he's very big into education. He would just get a kick out of this. Today's Dope Shit Award is going to Haley Taylor Sh uh, Schlitz, like the malt liquor. That's right. Haley Taylor Schlitz, little black girl, little sister girl. That's right, girl. She will be uh, the youngest uh, graduate from Southern Methodist University's youngest law school graduate in history at 19 years old. This girl is 19 years old. <coughs> excuse me. This girl is 19 years old and has graduated 
graduated from law school. That's crazy. Well, check it out. Back in 2019, she was accepted to nine different law schools. And also at the age of 19, the ripe old age of 19, she's already an accomplished author. She's a public speaker and she's an advocate for students of color that are faced with uh, navigate, navigating uh, 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 talented, gifted and talented programs for uh, for people in school. Which I just think is great because there are a lot of things. So basically, she I think she wants to get into it because when she was younger, I guess when she was in the fifth grade, uh, her teacher, they just didn't know what to do with her. I mean, she was probably, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing probably smarter than everybody in the class, but they just didn't know how to give her what she needed. So her parents actually took her out of school. Her parents took her out and homeschool. And, yo, shout out to her, this girl's parents, because they put this girl through, I mean, they put her through homeschool. She graduated high school at 13 years old. Crazy. They put this girl through school at home and she graduated high school at 13. When she was 16, she graduated. Um, she graduated from um, the also, again, the youngest woman to graduate from Texas Women's University. You know what I'm saying? So this girl is I mean, she got a brain on her head. She like the other girl uh, that uh, I did the uh, the who got the dope shit award about the, the COVID-19 vaccine. This girl right here is another force to be reckoned with. And on, not only that, this girl is young. She got a bright future ahead of her. And please, 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 you know, check out. So, you know, and, and, and pray for this girl because she is going to be watch out for her. She's going to be huge, man. She is going to be huge. She wants to work with education. She already says she wants to work with education. She's really big on that, obviously. So, but she wants to work on policies and issues to increase opportunities for gifted and talented girls and students of color. So I think that's very noble. And today, uh, Haley gets my, my, she, Miss Schlitz gets my, um, gets my dope shit award. I'm really excited to tell everybody about this today's earbuds. Now, I had mentioned uh, a few podcasts ago that I was a big fan of a group called the Black Star. And I also mentioned that they were coming out with a new album here uh, came or come uh, back then. I was uh, mentioning that they were coming out with a new album. Well, that album has dropped and I listened to the whole thing cover to cover. I think I listened to it today. Me and my wife while she sat there and worked and I sat here and worked myself we listened to the whole black star album i'm gonna tell you what i absolutely love it which i knew i was gonna love it but i will say this if you are not a fan of old school boom bap hip-hop um this ain't the album for you i'm just gonna go ahead and say it it doesn't have any of that trap you know no trap music elements you know no no fast cadence rapping it's just straight it's just straight socially conscious lyricism and it's really really deep but the beats all the beats is real mellow they real boom bap i mean straight off like straight out the top boom bap style hip-hop at its finest and you know who better to, li to deliver it to you than most deaf and to live quality also known as black star now i'm also i'm wondering you know i mean they just came out with this i'm hoping that they both will start putting out solo projects again and uh blessing the world with their music um big fan of most deaf also known as yaslin bay and also big star a uh, big fan of talib quali and i definitely i listen Listen to his. Uh, he's got a podcast I kind of listen to also, um, um, but definitely, definitely, I forgot the name of it. But I, I kind of come across. It's on Facebook. If you've seen it on Facebook, you know, Facebook watch some of. The, they have little clips of his podcast, and I kind of just watch uh, some of the people that he interviews. And he's very interesting, very intelligent cat. And the the music definitely shows the musicality in uh, in the album definitely shows that. So I'm definitely definitely on task with the. Um, with the uh, new album and uh, the album is titled No Fear of Time if you want to go check it out now I listen to it for free on YouTube you can just go in and search new Black Star album or either one of their names and it should come up with like first or second or something like that but I listened to the whole album in its entirety it was dope as shit so like I said if you're a fan of Black Star if you're a fan of socially conscious hip hop then this is definitely a good album to pick up a uh, good album to sit and stream and listen to uh, turn your friends on to it if they haven't heard if they're fans you know i've i try and turn turn my son on to because my son he swears up and down he know hip-hop but i keep telling you pops is hip-hop dude doesn't you know there's a lot of stuff that you qualify as hip-hop that ain't really hip-hop it's just 
but I, okay, I, I dig it. I get it. It's, you know, it's hip hop for the generation, but you know, this is, this is definitely where like, you know, some of the roots came from some of the forefathers of hip hop, you know, some of the, of, of boom bap style hip hop came from. So definitely, definitely check it out. Again, the album is titled no fear of time and it is by black star. Okay. On to the strain of the week. So, hey, babe. Yes. Uh, what was that? What was that pre-roll that we picked up? It was Witch Doctor, right? Yes. Okay, so check it out. We found um, we had been going back to this new place I had told you about last week, but we went back to this place and uh, picked up. It, well, she, I took her back uh, for her first time there, so she wanted a bunch of pre-rolls. So she had picked up a few pre-rolls that were kind of cool, but we stumbled upon this one it was 30 percent thc man straight off the bat bam and it was called uh, the witch doctor it was dope but it was definitely some indica <laughs> it was on some straight up chill out you know what i'm saying i mean i'm on i it's no big surprise that i'm on medication and part of the medication is it, it, it pretty prevents you from taking naps and stuff like this well the indica was fighting that shit hard it was like lay your ass down for a minute but i managed to pull through and uh actually we just put it out a little while ago and uh i was able to sit here and rehearse my podcast and here i am uh here talking on my podcast <laughs> but uh i do recommend it i'm like i'm never gonna i'm never gonna give you something that i wouldn't recommend that's what i say the strain of the week is always gonna be something that's good it's always gonna be some straight up gas so the witch doctor it is a 30 percent uh indica now, i usually am sativa heavy because like i said i like to try and get things done but you know surprisingly um you know, after a few minutes of feeling lethargic, I kind of got up and moved around a little bit, but I was able to come over and sit down and have uh, some sessions of product of, uh, productivity. So I'm sitting here trying to be as productive as I can before I go over there and play some video games <laughs> for the day. So um, again, it's I mean, I, I didn't really look it up on Leafly, but I'm sure it's on Leafly, but I'll go ahead and tell you about it a little bit. It's a true indica. It knocked the pain straight out. So I, my back never, my my back didn't hurt. Um, didn't have any issues with, with uh, with well, it did, no no issues with f- feeling hungry because it definitely makes you feel hungry. We ate some, uh, we ate some pizza and ate it like we never had pizza in our life. So it was definitely good for that. She worked. <laughs> So I guess it was pretty good while she worked. Um, she was able to maintain her focus and get uh, all, all of her work done pretty much. And she's still kind of over there focused focused on uh, what she's doing. So she was uh, over there. She hear me talking about her. So, <laughs> But um, I, definitely, I definitely recommend it. If you can go out and find it, it's called The Witch Doctor. It's an indica. And uh, yeah. All right, folks, what's popping this week? What is what is really popping this week? I'll tell you what's popping. You suck at relationships. That's what's popping. You fucking suck. And you know what? We all suck. I suck, too. You know, but that's not to say that we can't suck. You know, this is this is very important to me. Relationships are very important to me, like how to maintain your relationship, how to nurture and grow your relationship, how to how to how to create and build the best relationship that you can build. You know what I'm saying? How to create that? How do we make that, man? How do we make this relationship last? You know, nobody gets in a relationship to have it not work out. But constantly, people get into relationships and they don't work out. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there's a lot of factors. We all know that. We all know there's a lot of factors. There's personality factors. There's, you know, do we share the same nature? There's all kinds of factors that determine the course of your relationship. But... You know, sometimes, a lot of times, people kind of just fly through relationships blindly and they don't really, you know, recognize signs that this might not be a good match. They don't recognize signs when they're doing something wrong or their partner doesn't acknowledge them or there's all kinds of things that 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 hurt relationships. But if we can get out in front of some of these things or if we can learn to recognize some of these triggers, maybe we can make our relationships last. Maybe we can not suck so bad at them. You know what I'm saying? So... You know, these are some things that I have kind of um, taken account in, in, you know, some of my past relationships and some of the principles that I um, that I, t- I intend to apply in my my current relationship, well, well, which is which is the greatest relationship I've ever had because I'm married. You know, I've been in 
relationships with people longer than I've been in relationship with my wife, but this relationship for some reason it took me to the place of actually wanting to be married. So this uh, by far, uh, regardless of how long I spent with other people, uh, this by far has been my greatest relationship. And the one thing that is the most important thing to me, which is also a segment on my show, and this is basically relationship goals XL, um, this is something that's very important to me, which is to, I want to be a good husband. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be divorced in, you know, five years because we couldn't decide what to watch on TV or some dumb shit like that. Or, you know, I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be that dude. I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, push my wife away. I don't want, I don't want to, I don't want her to push me away. You know, I want to figure out what I can do to be the best husband I actually, I absolutely can to her. So that's what I, I promised her. So, you know, this is my 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 segment every week on relationship goals is basically me chronicling how to navigate that. And this is like I said, this is basically a larger part of that because um, people had said, you know, they had mentioned to me that um, uh, they wanted to hear more about uh my opinions on relationships based on, you know, the content that I, I produce about my relationships. So here goes nothing. So what are what 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 are the goals? We're going to talk about some goals and we're going to talk about some issues that happen in relationships. So the first one is, is why we suck at relationships. Well, why do we think we suck at relationships? Because we do. We fucking suck at them. <laughs> and there's a lot of reasons we suck at you know, the first we don't really know how to be in a relationship. That's one reason that people suck at them because they don't really know how to be in the relationship. They don't know how to give themselves 100% to this relationship. You know, it's, and it's really difficult because my sister always said it like this. When you first meet a person, you're not really meeting that person. You're meeting that person's representative. And that fucking shit is so true. You're not really meeting that person. You know, everybody comes out with, you know, hey, how you doing? They put their best foot forward first. You know, and that's that's what makes people fall in love is your best foot. And if you can maintain that, then you're winning. But most people don't really maintain that. And then after a while, that real motherfucker starts to come out and and people get to really see who you are. And that is the test of a relationship. Can you really sit through who this person really is, not their representative? You know what I'm saying? So we need to know how or know, you know how to deal with being in a relationship or how to create a relationship that or, or how, to, how to make a relationship. You know what I'm saying? And in that, we begin to understand what a relationship actually is. Because like I said, we don't really know what a relationship is. You know what I'm saying? We have the control over our relationships. We can pick the relationships that we want. That's the beautiful part about it. We can actually detail orient the relationships that we want. I chose my wife. You know what I'm saying? I picked my wife. You know what I'm saying? She picked me based on the criteria that we had set in our lives, based on the shit that we had been through in our lives. You know, we picked this criteria for ourselves. And fortunately for the both of us, we both matched each other's criteria. Great. You know, I mean, like perfectly. I mean, like perfectly. We, you know, I mean, I laugh more with my wife than I've ever laughed with any woman in my life. Anybody, anybody. I'm a comedian. My wife is hilarious. I really would like her to get on stage, but she ain't trying to have all that. So it's all good. She can sit here and make me laugh every day of the week because it, it's, it, it, it helps our relationship grow. It nurtures our relationship. We laugh every day hysterically at something one time a day at least. So it helps us maintain our closeness. You know what I'm saying? What's next? We don't really know what to expect in relationships. That's another issue. We don't really know what to expect while we're in this relationship. Well, what should I expect? I don't know what to do. I don't I, we don't know. We, we kind of just fly by the seat of our pants. But if we have a definitive, I know what I expect out of my relationship. You know, what I'm saying I respect I, I expect respect and courtesy and the same the same courtesy that I afford you is what I expect out of my relationship. Now, if I'm not getting that, then I'm going to sit down and say something about it. But I expect what I expect. I, I expect what you would expect out of the the most stellar relationship that you're going to have. You know what I'm saying? I expect people to, to you know, to, to be themselves. You know what I'm saying? But I want to get to know that person first. I got to get to know that person. So when that person decides that they do want to be themselves, however ratchet or boisterous or, you know, whatever they want to be, I know how to deal with that. You know what I'm saying? I could deal with that on on a better level. You know what I'm saying? 
Another problem that arises in relationships is we put too many rules and constraints on our partners, too many rules on being in a relationship. You don't have to accept bad behavior. That's not what I'm saying. But you don't you do have to let that person be who they are. Let that person be because that's who that's who you fell in love with. Right. You know what I'm saying? So let that person be who they are. And then you have to learn how to respect that. Like my wife, when we first got together, she told me my wife. You know, is a financial analyst by day, but she uh, she has a a business where she promotes and sells adult toys and health and wellness toys. As a matter of fact, that is who sponsored my show today. Um, and when she told me about it, initially I was like, oh, wow, you know, you'd be out talking to dudes about, you know, selling sex toys and dildos. How's that going to work out? You know, but that's who she was. And I had to realize that. She didn't. She wasn't into that. She was actually. She was into me. You know. She was into me. She's not into that. She was in. She just wanted to sell her 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 beliefs. She believes that you know sexual health is very important, and it really, really is. So many times we don't even give a fuck. We fuck anybody, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We don't give a fuck. We but and and always we always think about the consequences the next day because in the heat of the moment it's the heat of the moment but my wife has always been a big proponent of safe sex you know which is hey you know that's that's good she's she's also a big proponent of health and wellness you know health and wellness to me she makes me go to the doctor you know what i'm saying she makes me go to the doctor you know what I'm saying? So I don't go to the doctor. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm a man's man. You know, I you know, I stick a nail through my hand with a nail gun. I pull it out, wrap it up and go back to work. Nah, my wife's like, no, you need a tetanus shot. You need, you need to lay down for 25 minutes, all that shit. So, you know, I, I love her for that because she actually cares about me. You know what I'm saying? But back to putting rules and constraints on your partner. When you do that, right? So you got all these rules. Oh, you can't do this. You got to do that. Did this? Da da da. So that person has to basically ride that line. And if they go over that line a little bit, you're gonna be mad at them. You're gonna be in some sort of reaction with them. Once in a while, ah, you know, you shouldn't have did this. Or you shouldn't have did that. Well, no. What it is, is you should have just let this person be who this person is. It's what it is. I don't put any constraints on my wife. You know what I'm saying? I don't put any constraints on her. You know what I'm saying? I respect my wife. I respect who she is. I respect that she's going to do the right thing. Now, if she does the wrong thing, that's up to her. That's that's on her. And then that's something that we got to deal with later. But I don't have any reason as of now really to believe any 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 anything else other than she loves me with all her heart power. I am her Superman. I am her everything and and vice versa. You know what I'm saying? And I'm newly married, but that doesn't mean anything because we've been together for three years already. So married just is a title. I mean, we still had to come home and pay bills two days after we got married. We didn't do no kind of honeymoon. We came home and got it popping back on some regular. You know what I'm saying? So all this newlywed honeymoon talk, that's that shit is every day for me. You know what I'm saying? I'm a, I'm a real dude when it comes like that because I love my wife. I want my relationship to grow. You know what I'm saying? I'm not an old. I mean, I'm not a young dude. You know what I'm saying? And and I want my relationship to grow because I've learned I've learned how to negotiate and navigate things in my relationship. You know what I'm saying? So I really I've really stopped, you know, getting angry at so many things or putting to you, you can't go here, you can't hang out with this person, or da 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 you gotta race this person off it. Nah, you ain't gotta do none of that. You know what I'm saying? What I have to do is accept who you are or who you were as a person before you met me. You know what I'm saying? Just like you have to do. You know what I'm saying? She has to do the same thing. You know, she got to accept that I was a person before she met me. You know what I'm saying? I had a life. She got two kids. I got two kids. You know what I'm saying? There it is. You know what I'm saying? We both had lives before this. But now we're here together and now we have to learn how to grow our relationship. And we've always been able to sit down and compromise and talk. And it ain't been smooth all 100% of the time. You know what I mean? Like we have, we have a lot of great days, a lot of great days, but we do have some, you know, very few bad days. Like a few days ago, we had a bad day. I talked about it last week on my podcast. You know, the day before we got married, we had a really bad day, like a really bad day. You know what I'm saying? But we pulled it out and love prevailed. And the reason why is because we had grown our relationship to the point where it didn't matter what was happening. We just knew that no matter what, after the arguments, I do not want to be away from this person. 
This is my person right here. And you might be an asshole right now. And I ain't fucking with you right now. But you know what, though? I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to be sitting my ass right over here, huffing and puffing, smoking some, you know, whatever, some good, good, playing video games while you over there with your little back turn, you know, working on your little website. Whatever it is, you can be mad as you want to be, girl. But I'll be right here, girl. I ain't going nowhere. I'm right here. You know what I'm saying? So, so how can we make shit better? You know, how can we be better? How can, how can we be better? How can we make our relationships better? You know, because in a better relationship, we make ourselves better, right? Yeah, that's how it's supposed to work, right? Well, the first thing you got to do is you got to learn what type of relationship you have. <laughs> Some of us in relationships, we think we in a relationship with a motherfucker, but we really just, it's in our minds. <laughs> You know, he don't know nothing about the relationship or she don't know nothing about the relationship. You know what I'm saying? But we make it up in our minds because we just lo- we're infatuated with this person. We want this person. We try so hard. And da, 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 da. You know what I'm saying? But you have to learn what type of relationship you have. And it's OK what type of relationship you have to learn. You have to learn to accept w- the relationship. You know, it may not be what you think it is. You know, you have to. And that's why you have to be clear as to what kind of relationship you have. Learn what type of relationship. If it's a physical relationship, get that out in the open first or early. That way there's no misconception, there's only honesty, and sometimes the truth hurts, you know, the truth hurts the worst, but you can only respect the truth, you know what I'm saying? And you can make your decision from there. This person told you to, listen, I I only want to see you after the bar closed, you know what I'm saying? And and when I do see you, you need to put a fucking bag on your head, you know what I'm saying? Then you need to know either A, you're going to stand up for that, or B, you know you better than that, and you don't have to put up with that, you know what I'm saying? But honesty is probably, you know... especially like right off the rip is 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 parliament you know it's got to be right up front you know what i'm saying we had some dishonest moments when we first got together but we worked through those also and we vowed to each other that you know it was more important for us to be together than to be dishonest with each other because that's the only that's the one thing you know that's that's going to end the whole thing when it don't have to to end it's just not being honest with each other you know say what's on your mind you know um, you really kind of have to know what kind of relationship you want. You know what I'm saying? And that right there can be challenging because some people don't know what they want. You know, do you want a physical relationship? Do you want an emotional relationship? Do you want, you know, a pen pal? What the fuck? You know, you don't know what you want, you know, but you have to get clear about it. You have to get clear about what it is that you actually want. You know what I'm saying? Because if not, you're going to go from person to person and you're never going to find that person that really does it for you. You know, you're just going to go from person to person before you know it, you know, 10, 12, 15 years done pass. And, you know, oh, man, it's looking like I might be old and alone. That's and that's bullshit. Nobody wants that. Right. At least I don't Now Some people do. I don't know. But sorry, you know, get clear on what type of relationship you want. I want a relationship that grows, that's funny, that 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 you know, we 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 can laugh and cry with each other, that I can, you know, sit down and tell her anything that you know, I mean, I can walk in the bathroom, you know, while she going to the bathroom. That's the kind of just the the level of comfort that I want, which a lot of relationships, really comfortable relationships are there, but you know, I want that level of that 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 skyrocket level of relationship you know what i'm saying where it just is infinite it just keeps going it keeps going just overjoyed with being with each other and i know sometimes people been together for 30 years and they get tired of each other but i also know some people that's been together together for 30 years and you know it's like the first day they got together so and that's the way i feel and i feel that you know i will have a you know i'm gonna have a decent relationship or not a decent relationship a stellar relationship with my wife because that's the way i feel that every day we feel the same way it's almost like you know we meet for the first time every day so which is it's a good feeling so another thing you got to do is you have to genuinely support and care about that person in their plight you don't necessarily have to agree with them but at least hear that person out you know what I'm saying? Hear your person out. So if your person is coming to you and you you ain't got no time to hear them or da 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 or you frustrated, then you leave that person out there on the island. I really don't want to do that. I don't want to leave my wife out on some sort of iceberg. You know what I'm saying? When when you know when we should be communicating, trying to now you gotta sometimes let things go for a little bit so you can cool off. But you always need to meet back in the middle. You know what I'm saying? You always need to meet back in the middle, and 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 you have to learn to compromise. You compromise with each other, and and. 
when you start compromising with each other, you start learning more about each other. Oh, well, you know, this person, you know, they want to do this, but I don't want them to really do that because I want to do this. Well, if I let them do that and I'll be able to do this. Now, if you're able to compromise like that on that level, that's very basic and very, you know, paraphrase. But if you're able to compromise where you can break things down, where you're able to do that, then that just helps your relationship that much more because it's just it's you willing to open up to what your partner's needs are. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't don't really navigate that. They don't really ask what their partner's needs are. They just assume, and oh, I think that they need this, or I think they want that, or, da, 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 da. So, or they really don't fucking care. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, sometimes you just want them to understand that, you know, I need things from you you know, without really necessary, sometimes you got to be psychic, but some, but you really can't. But, and that's why it's just imperative that you, you, you communicate these things to each other when you need, 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 when you need your partner, you know what I'm saying? Compromise. It's very good. You know, it's very good in relationships. You know, it's the, it's, it's what makes me you know, accountability. Hold yourself accountable. I try to hold myself. I fucked it up. I fucked it up. I will be the first one. Yeah, I fucked that up. I'm sorry. You know, I'm the first one. My bad. You know what I'm saying? But don't get don't get overly sorry. You know what I'm saying? Don't be on that overly sorry bullshit cuz that shit is bullshit too cuz there's no reason to be far, sorry for shit you didn't do. Simple as that. You know what I'm saying? If you didn't do it, don't be sorry for it. You have to stand up in it. But you know, Anthony Robbins, the motivational speaker, he says sometimes people would rather be right than be in love, and that is very true and a lot of a lot of relationships end over pride and pride ain't never got nobody nothing. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, sometimes it's all right. Sometimes it's all right to back down and say, okay. And it's all is it's always almost always all right to apologize when you know you have wronged somebody or you've hurt somebody. You know what I'm saying? That's how they know that you care about them. When you don't apologize to a person that you've wronged, you make them feel that their 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 problems are insignificant to you and you never want to make somebody that you are in love with or in a loving relationship with feel like they are insignificant you know what i'm saying you never want to do that it's the most hurtful place the most lonely place you want to be where you feel insignificant to the person that you love you know what i'm saying and then you start feeling like you know you start feeling feelings of inadequacy you know, and then you start feeling like, you know, they want somebody else. Every time somebody halfway attractive walks by, you think they want that person instead of you. Your self-esteem goes through the floor. All kind of shit happens. You know what I'm saying? So, and on the backside of that, you know, self-esteem and all that shit, you got to know your value. You know, you got to know your value. You got to know your partner's value. And you have to know your relationship's value. And you also have to know your relationship's value to your partner. You know what I'm saying? Do I care more about this relationship than you? Which is very important because a lot of people are in that. A lot of people are right there where they they care so much about this relationship, but their partner really don't care as much as they do. They could, you know, be here today, gone tomorrow. don't really matter. And then you got to ask yourself, why? Why is that? Am, am I in that? That, you know, you start feeling all these crazy feelings of, of guilt and, you know, inadequacy and all kinds of shit. You know what I'm saying? Some people don't care. They try to, to hide it. You know, oh, it ain't bothering me. Or something. Yes, it is. Yes, it is, because it bothers everybody. You're only human. You know what I'm saying? So, know your value, though. You know, you got a motherfucker beating on you. You know, know your value, girl. You don't need a motherfucker beating on you. Know your value, bro. You got a chick running around. She want attention from every man around. You, you know your value, bro. You more valuable than that. You don't need that. You know what I'm saying? Know your value. Know your partner's value. Know your relationship's value. You know what I'm saying? My relationship is valuable to me. It is valuable to me. Let me say that again. My relationship with my wife, actually any of my relationships that I've cultivated with my wife, my son, my father, my sisters and brothers, my mom, everybody, my friends, all my relationships are important to me, extremely vital to me. You know what I'm saying? They make up who I am. You know what I'm saying? I have some great relationships with some great people. You know what I'm saying? Not just romantic relationships. You know what I'm saying? I got a buddy named Nick Gregory. He's a, an actor in New York City. He's one of my biggest mentors in the history of my life. I love him with all my heart. You know what I'm saying? The relationships make who you are. 
you know so what else are we talking about you got to know your person take time to get to know the person that you are trying to form a relationship with you know like i said earlier you know, people jump into, you know, jump into bed with anybody. You can jump into bed with people without knowing their fucking name. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's that's not always cool. You know what I mean? You know, everybody's done it, but, you know, that's not that's not what we really want. What we really wanted was connection. That's what we really wanted was intimacy. We didn't really necessarily want a relationship with somebody. You know, we just needed some, we needed a human touch or a warm feeling or something like that or, you know, whatever it is. But that ain't relationship. You know what I'm saying? It's just sex. And sometimes people equate sex to relationship. You know, you have a lot of sex with somebody and all of a sudden you think you're in a relationship with somebody. And that ain't always true. You know, you could have, you know, sex with somebody who's having sex with everybody. And you could be, you know, you're the only one I'm having sex with. Meanwhile, they're having sex with everybody. You know, so, you know, you have to know your value in your relationship. You also have to know your place in your relationships. You have to know your relationships. Take time to learn about your relationship and how you get down in your relationship. How do you correct problems in your relationships? Do you run away from them? Do you care when your partner is upset? Do you care that you upset your partner? There's all kinds of things, man. You know what I'm saying? Say how you feel. Definitely say how you feel. Partner's got to know. Your partner's got to know how you feel. You know? And this is, uh, this is I'm going to say this. Don't believe the bullshit that you make up in your head because a lot of times it's not true and you damage your relationship. You really do. I mean, you really, really do. I mean, a lot of times, you know, I've been in relationships where people just make shit up, just making shit up just because they're mad about something else and they make shit up and they accuse you shit and you ain't doing shit. And it's frustrating. You get frustrated and you run out and you're just mad and you want to, you know, and you didn't do anything. You've just been running, doing the shit that you do every day, trying to make your life work and you get accused of all kind of shit, but you ain't doing shit. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you got to watch out for shit like that. Don't make shit up in your head. If it ain't what it is, if you don't know and you this, this person comes home and listen, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to tell you what, ladies. I'm going to tell you what, la- la- not only ladies, but ladies and gentlemen. Check it out. All right, ladies. If that man is home every night, if that man, if you got a man, right, and that man comes home every night after work and he ain't never missed a day, he ain't never late, none of that shit. Leave that man alone. Stop fucking with him. You know what I'm saying? If that man always answers your calls, no matter where he is or what he is doing, leave that man alone. You know what I'm saying? If that man cooks for you, if that man cleans for you, if he is always trying to find out something to make you feel loved by him, you need to leave that man alone. Stop fucking with that man. If that man ain't never came home with another woman's hair on him, if he came home never smelling like another woman or no numbers in his, none of, none of that shit. Leave that man alone. That man loves you. You know what I'm saying? If that man volunteers information to you for nothing about his day, no matter what it is, leave that man alone. If that man is not afraid to show you affection in public, If that man would rather hurt his own body than have any harm come to yours. If that man is constantly trying to figure out ways to make you feel love and to grow his relationship with him, with him, you need to leave that man alone. Otherwise, your ass going to be by your fucking self. And that's the truth. You know what I'm saying? If you doing that, if you doing that, if you doing that to that man then he should leave you. You know what I'm saying? And all you doing is belly aching at this man, he should leave you. And I'm going to tell you what, fellas, on the other side of that, if you got a woman that come home and she home every night, when you get home and she got dinner ready, you know what I'm saying? Leave her alone, man. Stop fucking with her. You know what I'm saying? If you come home and no matter what time of night it is and you just rub your finger down her thigh and she, and she, and she yours, leave her alone, man. You know what I'm saying? She don't call you outside her name. She always got a smile for you. She always look good for you. You know what I'm saying? She ain't afraid to show you public in the street. I mean, show you affection in the street in public. 
Leave her alone, man. Nurture that relationship. Nurture that woman. She is giving herself to you. You know what I'm saying? If you don't want to meet in the middle, you know what I'm saying? If it's too too much for y'all to meet in the middle, then let each other go. If you don't care about each other's feelings or if you hurt each other, then let each other go. That's the easiest thing to do. Let it go. Just peace out on it. Because you ain't doing nothing but hurting yourself. You know what I'm saying? Nothing but hurting yourself. So, I got more, you know, but, oh yeah, remember, alcohol is not love. Just saying. I had more, but uh, um, I think uh, it's getting close to time, y'all. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'll probably wrap this up and I will uh, come back and revisit this because uh, there's more things that you can do. There's more things. I mean, we do all kinds of stuff. Like I said, we take trips. We're always someplace. We always have a camera in each other's face. We always laughing. You know, there's ways to find that stuff. You know what I'm saying? There's ways to find where your love is you know what i'm saying there's ways to grow your love but the first the first way i want i just give you a hint to if you want to grow your love if you want to grow your relationship the first thing you have to do is listen that's it listen open your ears and listen listen to this person listen to this person listen to their needs don't blow them off. Give them your undivided attention. You know, if they want to talk to you, put down the shit you're doing. Turn into them. Give them that respect, especially if they give it to you. All right, folks, that's pretty much it for the podcast today. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. And if you have a good relationship with somebody, try and grow it. You know, don't make that person feel that, that like you love them. Go to your loved one right now go to the person that you love the person that does it for you you grab that person's hand you look him in the eye and you tell him hey go fix me some fucking food and uh, no I'm kidding um, you tell him you tell that person you let that person know man you let that person know that they mean everything to you you know what I'm saying and you'll be surprised what you get so thank you again for tuning in to the Darren Harris podcast I again am your host Darren Harris peace <laughs>